congratulations to everybody watching this who's Kansas City Chiefs fan, which seems to be the majority of my audience. <laughs> Don't know how that happened. You guys outplayed him. Just all there is to it. Hey, you got the So I have some thoughts about the game. I have some thoughts about my reaction to the game. I have some thoughts about your reactions to my reaction to the game. First of all, thank you guys for watching. It's crazy to me that anybody is watching this, much less enjoying it, because it's kind of just me being me, and I didn't know there was a market for that. I have made $2.32, so thank you for that. I'm gonna go buy some candy. As you may have noticed from my reaction videos, I was pretty bored by the third quarter, which is not to say that I thought all three quarters were boring. I was actually really into the first quarter because I like seeing good play. I don't care if it's defensive play. The defenses were playing out of their minds. San Francisco more than Kansas City, but both of them were just bananas in the first quarter and even into the second quarter. The halftime show and the third quarter took a lot out of me. There's still nine minutes left in the third quarter. Oh, yeah. How? <laughs> What? A 45 minute halftime takes a lot out of the players too. Halftime in general kills momentum, I've noticed from going to a couple of the playoff games in Buffalo. You think it's given them a chance to rest, but really it just kind of knocks everybody down. They're readjusting to whatever their new game plan is based on what they saw in the first half. So that takes a little while to kind of get up to speed. And the crowd dies down. I don't feel like Usher on roller skates really got that crowd all that pumped up. Certainly didn't get me very pumped up at home, which was kind of a bummer. I am finding it hard to describe how much better Rihanna was last year than this. <laughs> the Niners clearly lost a lot when they lost Dre Greenlaw. That was a big loss for them. No! When your plan is take Kelsey out of commission, losing one of your star linebackers is not great. I can attest to this from personal experience because the Bills tried to cover Travis Kelsey with a guy who'd been on his way to the Florida Keys on a camper two weeks before the game and got called back up after he'd gotten kicked off the team. He's like 45 years old. I don't know how old AJ Klein is. He's old and he was not in shape. And that's who we had covering Travis Kelsey. But the second half Kelsey was very different from the first half Kelsey. First half Kelsey had Taylor Swift chugging beers. I mean, the Niners offense was playing pretty darn well too. McCaffrey had that fumble. Kittle was too busy joking around to pay attention to the fact that there might be a fumble. Hey George, George Kittle had a chance to get gotta finish the play. I love George Kittle, but you gotta finish the play. Plus, that was apparently where he fucked up his shoulder, which might explain why he kind of vanished for the rest of the game as far as catching things. It finally got bad enough that he went out in, I don't remember whether it was the fourth quarter or overtime. I should know this, but I don't. And came in just in time to make a really great play, but missed a very important play. The guy who came in for him got a holding penalty at like the worst possible time. Kittle comes back Yeah, I was gonna say, huddle. he wishes he was in the play before because- No kidding. And that's the guy in for Kittle. Wow. Speaking of which, let's just go on with my continued theme that the Chiefs O-line holds like fucking crazy. And you guys can debate me about this, but it's just true. Kyle Shanahan even says so. That's what they do every time. They hold, they tug our guys when Pat leaves. Not that Kyle Shanahan really had a great handle on everything in that game, given that he didn't know what the overtime rules were, or at least he hadn't passed along to his players what the overtime rules were. And yes, I know I probably should have known what the overtime rules are, given why the overtime rules got changed. I knew that they did get changed because of the Bills Chiefs game. I didn't know what the specifics were, which is why I asked my friend. But the look on Mahomes' face when the Niners said that they wanted to get the ball in overtime. This surprised him. As much as I've expressed also that Mahomes' face has been bugging me this this year, that was a really good face. And things changed a lot towards the end of the game, and I think that's because the defenses got really tired. So you stop seeing such strong defensive play and the offense managed to rev up a little bit, especially the Chiefs. The Niners offense, again, was still hanging in there. And it really came down to who was the most tired by the end of 
five full quarters. By the way, also thank you to the people on Twitter who have been vehemently incorrect, loudly incorrect about the whole timing situation as far as quarters go and how that would have affected the play. I didn't know that either. Now I know if they'd gotten to the end of that quarter and hadn't scored a touchdown with those four seconds left, wouldn't matter there would still be another quarter. So now I know for next year when the Bills are in the Super Bowl, over time you could just see how much more tired the Niners were than the Chiefs. McCaffrey's face, oh my God. I, like, I'm surprised. He looked like he wanted to be screaming in pain, but he could not catch his breath enough to scream. He was dying. Instead of just handing off the zone, it's a toss similar type play. Purdy hung in there. You want to call him a game manager or whatever, but he played a really solid game. And just the last play, Chris Jones wasn't tired. I ain't going nowhere, baby! I don't know if it was the play that was called, letting Chris Jones go unblocked in that particular moment seems to have been a poor choice. What was funny to me at the end of the game was that Tony Romo had gotten so, he was so out of color commentary that he'd gone kind of past color commentary into becoming a defensive or offensive coordinator. He was, he was play calling by the end and like commenting very specific, like, which is a thing that obviously they do sometimes, but he was doing it on every play. And I was like, Tony, you're not coaching the team. The things you say aren't going to make an effect. So the fact that he was freaking out. Why, 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 why? Oh my God, it was so funny. Thank you to the guy today in the comments who said that in a fair world, Tony Romo would lose his job and I would take it over. We would have very different color commentary. His is knowledgeable about play calling and such. Mine is just kind of vulgar. And uh, yeah, I don't think they want that on CBS. It sucks that Steve Wilkes is the one who ended up being sort of the sacrificial lamb at the end of this. My understanding of defensive play calling is considerably weaker than offensive play calling. Not that I'm great at that either. I'm just some chick who watches things on TV and tries to learn as much as I can as I go along. And from what I've heard from people who watch the Niners all season, Wilkes was not the right fit for this team. But in the aftermath of this particular game, Wilkes played a great game all the way through and then overtime went to shit. And I, I don't know if that's just a question of Andy Reid being fucking mastermind. I think he kind of is. Or if they just lost the plot on the defensive side in San Francisco. It was kind of weird to watch. It was hard to watch because I knew what was happening. End of the fourth quarter, my God, you do not let Patrick Mahomes get the ball back with two, like, what are you doing? Serious PTSD from that. I've seen that so many times at this point, just marching right down the field. That's all he needed to do. This was not gonna be a challenge for him and they knew it. Purdy knew it. He knew he'd fucked up. You can't give Mahomes back. No, you, you just can't. The defense was the MVP for most of the game. But Mahomes became Mahomes at the end, and he's always going to do that, and that's why he's who he is. It's why, I, if you watch those videos, I was legitimately rooting for the Chiefs in the middle there because I didn't understand why they were playing so badly. It was so out of character. They were flailing, and I was frustrated, and I wanted them to do better. Again, because just because I mostly wanted a more entertaining game, but I was not actively really rooting for the Niners at the beginning of that game. But when it turned into, let's give Mahomes back the ball with two minutes, that was, that was it. I, I can't keep rooting for the Chiefs at that point. Sorry, guys. It feels icky in my body. That said, I wasn't mad about it when they won. I was happy for them at the parade. They were having a blast. Last is the wrong word. I'm, ugh, I'm gonna take that back. They were having a lot of drunken fun until they weren't. And I'm, I'm sincerely sorry to all the Chiefs fans who had this moment of just pure joy taken away from them. That's, it's, it's cruel and it's unfair. I, I'm, I'm sending you my most sincere thoughts and prayers. I don't know. What do you say in this situation? It sucks. You know, I wanted to watch Willie Gay collapse doing interviews in the middle of the street with his shirt off. Wait, wait, wait. I wanted Travis Kelsey to give 
a hug to the ugliest man on television and almost knock him over. The look on Nick Wright's face is just hilarious here. You guys can back up, please. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Honestly, I think Nick Wright was in more danger of falling over from Travis Kelsey's physical contact than Andy Reid ever was. Didn't really need to watch Kelsey sing Garth Brooks, though. That was, that was pretty cringy, I kind of felt, for Taylor. Like, <laughs> like he wasn't, I understand he was very happy. He kind of looked like a mess. <laughs> Ooh, I'm happy for the Chiefs fans watching this. You guys deserved it. Your team was the better team. And I'm sorry that you're not going to get to enjoy this as fully as you otherwise would. And on that rather somber note, I'm going to sign off, I guess. I will try and come up with some more content till the next season. It's obviously not going to be coming out as regularly as it has been, which kind of sucks because I'm suddenly getting thousands and thousands of views on things. And then it's like, womp, womp. I think the next video I'm going to put out is going to be like a five minute video of me watching the puppy bowl with my dog. I started watching the puppy bowl with my dog and my dog did not like it. So I got like 15 minutes into the puppy bowl. It's long. My video will be much shorter than the actual puppy bowl. Like everybody likes puppies, but like over two hours of puppies running into each other is too much. <laughs> my dog looks so stupid. Oh, it's the stupidest looking dog. I'm gonna try and figure out stuff about salary caps, draft and free agency and all that stuff. I'm gonna look like a fool doing it, but you know, bear with me. It's not a part of the game that I've ever paid attention to before, but it'll be interesting. Also, I've never played fantasy football before and I'm looking into maybe doing fantasy football next fall, which is, you know, an interesting perspective because I get the sense that watching the game as a fan and watching the game playing fantasy football are two very, very different things. And from what I've noticed, a lot of the time on Twitter, people who are fantasy guys are really fixated on specific stats in a way that isn't necessarily completely holistic to the performances of players and teams other than just numbers on a page. And I'm gonna try and get tickets to training camp because it's real near where I live. But that's a ways off. I'm just sort of brainstorming stuff. If you guys have any ideas, drop it in the comments. So congrats Chiefs fans, sucks for Niners fans, and go Bills.